Skipping the next one, because it's kind of old at this point, but moving into more patent absurdity. Can we honestly believe that Apple, of all companies, is trying to get people to use Windows? <laughs> Why? Like Android yeah. Its ass. <laughs> yeah, they don't they, they really don't like Android. <laughs> I'm happy to see as a, comp, a competitor because it's basically you know, like <coughs> Well, they, the they, they don't want to compete with Android. They want to sue it out of existence whether they have the right to or not. They are trying to use patents and legislation. The, the, Apple's goal is to make uh, it illegal for HTC to sue Android phones in the uh, by December 6th. That, that's Apple's goal. That's what they're going for here. Uh, and HTC is go, you know, pointing out the competition issue and that this is a flimsy uh, case at best, which is why they're appealing it. Uh, and, and Apple in exchange is you know, saying, it's like oh... It's said, 1980s 2.0. Yeah, the, these other two things should come out, but this is supposedly going to be rolled on in December of this year. But Apple is quoted as saying, no, that's not true. We're not preventing competition. HTC, you can use Windows Phone 7. And I just... <laughs> oh, why would anybody want to? Nobody wants Windows Phone 7. Well, if you've messed with the beta of Windows 8, you would debate about that, actually. <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> if you've messed with the beta for Windows 8, it's essentially Windows Phone 7 UI. <laughs> No, no, it, it's, it, it, what, what Windows 8 is, is Windows 7 with this, like, virtualized, self-contained slate slash phone OS that's based on the Windows 7, excuse me, on the Windows Phone 7 UI that is also the primary start menu for the Windows 8 OS, but anything you launch from it or do with it has nothing whatsoever to do with the actual Windows OS because I was playing around with that earlier today in fact and actually yesterday at this point because we are technically after midnight here but uh, we were playing around on there and just for funs and giggles we started launching applications after the window off of the Windows 8 start menu and we discovered something there's no exit button for them, so they just stay running in the background. We pulled up the task manager, and we realized that they were running suspended using memory resources, but not processor resources. We, and we, but when we launched the task manager, we switched to desktop, which is the classic Windows 7 type thing, and there was a quick launch icon down there for IE, so we launched it. And then, of course, we went back to our start menu and launched IE again. And we had two instances of IE running that couldn't talk to each other, and, and so on and so forth. We launched things like FileZilla and Firefox, which ran in desktop mode, but could not be seen by Windows 8 mode. <laughs> and, 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 uh, so it's an potential cooking separation, basically. Yeah, I, I I can honestly see the average end user firing up their Windows 8 machine without meaning to, winding up with 20 to 50 things just running in the background that they don't even realize it, using up their computer's resources. Right. They need to fix that. Um, well, supposedly it's launching next year, so do you really think there's time for a complete rewrite of something like that? It might be like a quick fix or something, who knows. Uh, I, I, I take it for, uh, Bob, have you used Windows 8 any yet? Uh, I've messed around a little, a little bit. Um, What's your initial impressions of it? It's a bastardized version of Windows 7 and Windows 7 with a phone <laughs> <laughs> thrown together. That's really all it is to me. <laughs> I, I, admittedly, uh, the widgetized start menu could be useful. But ironically, I find myself wanting something on it that's an iPhone feature, uh, of all things. Because on an iPhone, uh, if I tap an icon, you know, I can move it somewhere else and I just tap it uh, and I can swipe around. But it's like, do you really want to be dragging those tiles once you get a bunch of applications installed all over the place 
and scrolling from one end of your start menu to the other end of your start menu and going swat and scroll and swat. And, I, I mean, I, I can see that getting annoying, especially since it's what you have to use on a regular computer. You better have a touch screen for Windows 8. That's all I have to say. Can I always turn natural off if you hate it somehow? You can you can click a desktop icon in the start menu when you go back to something that's very reminiscent of Windows 7, but the start menu is still this phone 7 tile menu. That's just what it is. Okay, so you can't turn it off from the default stuff that's in there, but will a third-party program be able to turn it off? Who knows? Well, there are, used, there are terms of service say you can't change the UI or replace the shell. You know, people don't read those. <laughs> <laughs> Do people actually read those? Ugh. If there was a way to get a classic start menu back, I'm not. Uh, we 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 have a fun. I've only started screwing around with it. Anyways, let's go into the quote unquote ten reasons businesses might want to switch to Windows 8. Okay, or as I say it, reject it utterly. <laughs> Many are still using XP. This is being toted as a reason that businesses will upgrade to Windows 8. Now the reason why they're still using XP is because of drivers. <laughs> no, the reason they're using XP is because it has a security updates until 2014. <laughs> I thought it was 2015. No, 2014's XP is end of life. Okay. Uh, it, it's a combination of the familiarity, uh, certain hardware, and like you say, they get this enterprise gets the security updates till 2014. That's not going to change the driver's familiarity and security is not going to magically change in the end of 2012. So when Microsoft starts launching Windows 8, they're gonna have to. It's gonna have to give new functionality and usability to convince you know companies to want to switch and upgrade to it. Ugh. And personally, based on what, on the, you know what, take my Windows 8 reviews, Hassan, because we spent 20 to 30 minutes trying to figure out how to do simple stuff in Windows 8 a few hours ago, so I'm a little jaded against it right now. I, I, if it takes a geek forever to figure something out, you know it's fucked up. <laughs> Well, again, this came from the fact that, like I said, the, the Phone 7 UI does not talk to the Windows desktop UI. They don't communicate well with each other. So, yeah. Uh, Windows 7 isn't fully rolled out. Again, this is a reason Enterprise would want to switch to Windows 8. Oh, uh, yeah, right, because in the <laughs> consumer market, Windows 7 is the most popular list. <laughs> Well, on the consumer market, with the exception of a few power users who go and dig their old XP Service Pack 3 disc out and install it, uh, Windows 7 is what you get. If you go buy a Windows computer, you're going to get Windows 7. That's just what you're going to get. Well, I'm just saying because it had sold XP because of recent trends, I guess, in marketing, you know. It, it, their XP is not for sale anymore. The only no, people uh, who are selling XP are retailers who have the ability to issue no, their own No, it's only been out for a couple of years and already outsold XP when it was sold in 10 years. Do you get what I'm saying? Uh, that's a bit of trick in the numbers, but okay. Well, that's what I heard, but I could be uh, pulling stuff out of my ass, but whatever. Anyway... Uh, uh, okay, this goes on to what Bob was saying. Think about tablets. <laughs> oh, think about the tablets. Oh. <laughs> you know, you have to admit, that is clearly what Windows 8 is designed for. The computer Windows 8 is designed for is like these little 10-inch notebook slash slate devices. That's, that's what Windows 8 is designed for. I was going to say, it's designed for, like, the touchpad that I just reviewed. I mean, that's what they're designed for. Pretty much, yeah. 
Well, it, that's what they're turning their desktop OS into, which is going to get incredibly annoying. <laughs> the dummy yeah, that the user interface. Yay! Oh, no! And, and on top of that, everything in it, and I do mean everything, everything from Explore to Sant, it, it is ribbon. Even the task manager it, it, it is like a hair's breadth away from being ribbon. It, it, it's... It, it, they have all but removed the menu bar from Windows 8. It's a it's a ribbon bar, and that when you get in that, it's it's basically designed to because you have to be a power user to get to the standard uh, desktop you know and love. You're pretty much and like I said, they don't talk to each other. If I click the Internet Explorer launch in the start menu, I'm going to launch a full screen version of Internet Explorer that does not talk with the desktop. I'll go to the desktop, stick my mouse over the Windows 7 like UI and mouse over IE and it won't know that there's any sessions running because it's the full screen IE, not the windowed IE. So... Now do you think there's going to be a backlash on desktop users? Uh, traditional desktop users are going to be in a boxing match with Windows 8 on day one. So do you think it might be a Vista-ish well, not this dish with the drive issue, but this dish with the UI stuff. With, with the UI, with a lot of people, there's going to be a Vista backlash. Uh, it, because things are not... Uh, you go in there, um, you go to the settings thing, it, 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 it's as simplified as it can get. Uh, and, you know, that's... That can be a good thing, but for a power user or anybody actually trying to get, it's like this was the joke we were all making earlier. It's like, well, I hope I don't need to do any work on my Windows computer when I buy my nice shiny Windows 8 computer. <laughs> but a 16 by 9 screen. Uh, no, that's not even the issue. The issue is because you have to. But I, I'm, I'm just saying because they they're more consumers and actual working, you know. Uh, okay, have have. Have any of you ever been on a web page where it's it's like too wide, where you have to scroll the bar on the web page over like two or three pages to actually finish using the page? Yeah. Okay. That is the Windows 8 experience if you're not on a slate touch screeny device. You put your mouse in the lower left hand corner. You bring up the start menu, it brings up this Windows 7 gesture, uh, 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 phone 7 uh, tile thing, and you have a scroll bar on the bottom, which you have to slide over, slide over, slide over, slide over to use your start menu, and so on and so forth. And that's just the experience if you're trying to interface with it with a mouse and keyboard. Uh, this is really going to piss off custom builders because I think, you know, the desktop, you like, in order to get a desktop, you have to build it yourself and get something to build it for you. I think that's the way it's going to be unless you're doing the enterprise thing. Uh, basically, you need to be prepared to buy a touch screen. And, and right now, touch screens are not that cheap to buy. No. Uh, well, and, and new touch screen computers are really not that cheap. With the exception of, like I said, the 10 inch cheapy books. Because right now, it's about, what, probably 900 bucks for the basic all in ones that usually have some type of touch screen. I think Dell's is a tiny bit cheaper, but not by much. So basically, you're, if you buy one of these, the, you know what? That may be what Windows is trying to do here. They may be trying to kill the cheapy netbook. Mm -hmm. Well, is that really going to work that well? Uh, I don't think it's going to work, though. You're always going to have people that need bait to computing, and that's it. I guess. Well, it's, I guess they're trying to convert those people over to slates. But Unfortunately, I, there's this whole like limitation of media consumption that they get with slates. <laughs> Well, and see, there's the other thing. Like I said, you know, one of the first things we installed on the system we were messing with was Firefox and FileZilla. Okay, when you launch traditional applications like that, it launches it in desktop mode, which is, like I said, very Windows 7-like. 
but desktop mode does not communicate with the full screen mode that the start menu is in. So you have to put your mouse on the left and switch between these two modes. Basically, it's like having a virtual OS. I'm not sure which one's virtual, but you have an OS and a virtual OS, and they don't talk to each other. And that's just like, you know, that's fine for us power users who are used to Linux or OS X and are used to having multiple desktops and multitasking and going, oh, this box doesn't communicate with this box and so on and so forth. For the average Windows user... That's going to drive them crazy. Yeah. <laughs> They'll go, where did it go? I had it open. Where did it go? Where did it go? And they're going to forget. It's on the other side. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, and this brings us on to point four. The new look won't scare employees. I know they're being serious, but what? No, they, they honestly think the whole time. That, they honestly think this UI change that we've been talking about here will not scare employees and will lead to zero loss in productivity. one I'm sure goes without saying expect better security Microsoft has been stepping up their fawn lately on you know making Windows more secure it's on it, we, we'll see what they do with Windows they 8 they've done a good job in the past uh, couple years yeah. it was a joke of security in terms back one well, see, I have mixed feelings about their security because it, it, it they, they've secured some things and that's a good thing, but also because of the way they've done it, uh, it it's created some interesting security holes if you're having to deal with legacy. It's not an issue if you upgrade everything, but if you're having to deal with systems that aren't Windows systems or older Windows systems, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. But I, 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 I'm sure they will have better security. How well it will play with non-Windows 8 computers, time will only tell. <sighs> this is the only one I don't have anything to bitch over. Companies have time to plan. Yes, they have time to plan for the Microsoft Ultimatum. Because, I mean, like you said, everybody can download the beta right now. They have a year to prepare for it. Well, did Vista have an open beta? No, 7 did. Okay. Yeah. It's like Microsoft has gotten a lot better about that. Basically, a year or so before they plan to launch their new OS, they go, here it is play with it, look at it, so you IT managers and developers don't get hit out of left field with all your all your employees buying new computers coming in there and going, how does this work that you've never seen before and haven't had time to mess with yet? <laughs> yeah, they're preparing them for something they're not going to like. Well, yeah, it's like that, well, that was the issue with Vista. You know, it, it, it got instant bad flack because it was the bane of IT people. It, it's they've decided, okay, if we don't completely shock the hell out of them, maybe they won't completely and totally mask it. Well, they, they can get the exchange they're working on, but that's, a, you know, that's the only thing they care about. But, yeah. Uh. I don't know, Bob. You think you think everybody's getting enough? Given how dramatic the UI changes, you think everybody's getting enough time to plan? Um, we'll see. <laughs> I mean, it, some would say there is plenty of time with this, though, except for Vista didn't have an open, essentially an open beta or developer previews that much as a uh, Windows Seven or obviously Windows Eight now. So it, no, it, it, seem to see. Seven was the first one to do that. XP and Vista did not do that. And Seven had leaks. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, no. It, it, well, I, it, now I, I take that back. XP did not have a public beta, but if you were going to conferences or knew people who were going to conferences at the time of XP, 
there were thousands of people in the industry running around with copies of Windows XP upwards of a year before Windows XP launched. So that's not exactly true. Vista, they kind of dropped the ball on that. China. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, I was trying to be kind. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> I'm sorry, when I have a modern video card at that point in time, and I can't even get the drivers to work, that could be a part of a Windows issue. That can be a part of the OEM issue from the you know video card manufacturer. It still didn't work. Yeah, there was that little kink. Oops. <laughs> uh, so I, spent, I spent three hundred dollars on the ultimate edition, and it didn't do crap. Yeah, you had to downgrade to XP to use it. Yeah. <laughs> Which was why so many companies were just saying, "Upgrade to XP," <laughs> and charging money for it. <laughs> Hi, if you'd like an operating system that works, give us more money. Otherwise, you can get stuck with Vista. <laughs> that on a crappy hardware, don't forget about that. Oh, yes. Vista's escape goat to sell crappy hardware. Which we're going to find XP because of the five-year-old us at the time. Well, no, and that is something they're doing better in 7.7. 7, as near as I can tell, will run on really lightweight machines. But I think that has less to do with Microsoft trying to support legacy for all the UI things we've talked about. They you want to support ARM. Because uh, that's no, better. no, they're going to support ARM. But like I said, it has less with them wanting to support legacy systems because you do not want to use Windows 8 on the legacy system and more to do with trying to make it lightweight enough to run as well on a slate as it does on a desktop system. Yeah, because upgrade and RAM on a slate is so easy. <laughs> yep. Okay. Magic point number nine. It's still Windows after all. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Uh, it's not Vista, so we know it. Well, no, Windows but, Windows. But, but before Windows Vista, I would have, on, even as a firm supporter of Linux and loving Linux and, and, you know, wishing Linux had more market share, or if people are not smart enough to use Linux, they would at least use something other than Windows, just to avail themselves, even if that means they went going to... Buy Mac. <laughs> I was going to say the bastard of computers, but okay. Uh, j just just to get out of the Microsoftian uh, culture. But Windows is Windows, and Windows has this on. You know, the reality is enterprise, enterprise largely runs on Windows, because that's just how it is. But Windows Vista changed that. You know, it was such a... Uh, I... Five years ago, you know, before the Vista, it was unheard of to go around to non-technical small businesses and have them seriously contemplating abandoning Windows. But almost wow. everyone I go to, like upwards of 70 to 80 percent of them now, are seriously contemplating at some point in the next five years abandoning the Windows operating system. I hope they're not going to go Mac. Uh, yeah, well, some of them are debating about Linux, some of them are debating about OS X, some of them are just, you know, looking at their options, but there's a feel among enterprise users that maybe we don't want to use Windows anymore. Because we like the old Windows, we don't so much like the new Windows, and the new, new Windows seems to be more of what we don't like about the new Windows. <laughs> And there's enough of them, there's a growing number of them that are, you know, more than idly contemplating, we need to begin structuring our business to be in the position that if we have to, we can get away from Windows. I also want a backup plan, so um, in case of emergency break grass. <laughs> or, or, or if the new thing won't work with the old thing, or so, they're, they're, they're realizing they, they can't afford to be at Microsoft's whims. Uh, and that was something that uh, I blame squarely on Vista because before Vista, the majority of enterprise, except for technical, geeky IT people, would never have considered that. But average users on the business side are seriously considering that now. 
So really, if they if Microsoft release another Vista or two, they could have some serious erosion. I wouldn't expect them to fall below fifty percent, but I wouldn't expect them to stay way above eighty percent either. <laughs> so, That's gonna be eighty ten ten. Well, by some estimates, they're already down to about 80%. Depending on what the metrics you look at. Yeah, like, the uh, uh, like I said, they, they have still not fully recovered from their hit from Vista. Uh, and based on what I'm seeing with Windows 8, I'm not sure they're going to <laughs> if they try and cram that down everybody's throat. Uh, you know, it's like, and like you said earlier, the other thing is ARM compatibility, which I don't agree is a selling point for enterprise. That's a selling point for the entertainment lovey-dovey, I want to watch a video consumer people because now they can have the same OS they have on their desktop computer, on their ARM slate, and their cell phone. But that is not a selling point for enterprise because is there one enterprise commercial piece of software that anybody can name that is going to run on ARM? Uh, maybe Microsoft Office. <laughs> Bob, can right. you think of anything else? <laughs> uh, not off the top of my head. That would. Alright, that's not one piece of software. That's a whole suite, but whatever. Uh, yeah, it, it, I, I mean, and, and I don't think Office is going to launch on ARM next year. It, they, I guess they could. Office 2012, now on ARM. <laughs> well, they already ported the ARM. They saw it in the demo. They would run on ARM, and they, and they contacted the license of like a printer manufacturer. Like, oh, it would make products for ARM, but it doesn't mean anybody's going to make them. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it's like it, it, it's like the 64-bit conversion. The software will come when the OS and everything's there, and people will switch to the OS and the architecture when the software's there. So it's, you know, it's a chicken and egg thing. I think they already switched because uh, it, it is an open beta. I think OEMs already had the hands-on it before the... Uh the, even the open beta OEMs came out. did, but I'm talking about the software. Like I said, if I launch the current version of Firefox or FileZilla or yeah, other like tradition, traditional software, it launches in this pseudo mode in Windows 8, which kind of breaks the whole flow of the UI up. No. Oh, because you're not doing the native Windows 8 APIs. Well, yeah, you're running in like a traditional desktop mode, which would be a nightmare for a touch interface. I mean, do you, do you honestly want to mess with desktop FileZilla using a touch screen in your finger? Well, I've installed like for the Firefox thing, but FileZilla, you know. Yeah, where you have to click File and Upload and such. Do you want to be doing that with your finger on a touch screen? It just... <laughs> I, I, I'm starting to think they don't really give a care about how we use it anymore. Well, it, it, everybody's bashing on Windows 8, and we've been bashing on Windows 8 for the last 30 minutes here now. Um, yeah, right. People have been bashing on it, huh? Yeah, well, it's some, some love it, some hate it. Personally, and I and I blame this observation on the one of the people on the person whose system we were screwing around with Windows 8 on. Uh, he pointed out Microsoft is in between an impossible rock and a hard place at this point. And that is, they screwed up. They are behind when it comes to adopting all the things they're trying to cram down people's throat in Windows 8. They have no slate offering. They have no good unified phone offering. They uh, do not have any kind of marketplace. And this is all things they're trying to cram down people's throat in Windows 8. But because they're so far behind and they're trying to cram it down everyone's throat, it's, okay, join the direction the industry is going, but in a way that gives our user base zero room to breathe, or take five to ten years to do it, at which point we're obsolete. Like I said, impossible rock in a hard place. They have to do this, and they have to do it now. So they cannot give their user time to breathe. They must cram it down their throat. And the end result is going to be neither the hardware manufacturers nor the end user nor enterprise is going to get a second to breathe. And they're just going to have to deal with the, what the hell is this? <laughs>
do y'all disagree, or do you think they have? Do you think they could take five to ten years to roll that out slowly and give the industry time to catch its breath, or? I think the whole, you know, Microsoft, just as an example, the whole Microsoft running on ARM or whatever. I really don't view that as big of a deal as because Microsoft feels like, oh shit, now Android is going to be running on Intel's platform. Oh fuck. You know, it, it's more of a, yeah, we're screwed, okay, we have to get our ass in gear, so we're just going to cram this down people's throats because we have the market share. Now, is, is there a way for, like, Windows to get a universal virus? They haven't done it with um, x86 and x86-64 bit. Well, and, and it has to do with the way Apple... Uh, here's the thing. Uh, it would be possible for Windows to run some kind of a uh, emulized virtualization to allow applications, you know, yeah. design... Yeah, I suppose you could do it, but I think you need two different licenses of uh, Windows or something. No, you wouldn't need two different licenses. What they could do is have a virtualized environment or layer in Windows that would let ARM run x86 stuff, but you'd have all the inherent inefficiencies that go with that, and the ARM processors are kind of underpowered at least the ones they'd be running on right now, which means it would be a really crappy experience because it'd be like trying to have an Atom do the work of a Xeon. Yeah. It's just it would lag, it wouldn't be good. It would be a lot worse because simulation if it's not native code. Yeah. Well, it could be done the other way around efficiently, but when you're trying to make something run, when you're trying to make something that's already a little underpowered run on something and that then needs extra resources to run. It, it, it's not native. Yeah, and, and like you said, you know, uh, and then that goes to the UI thing. Like I said, you don't want to mess with a desktop UI on a Slate device, which is what the traditional x86 applications are going to be anyways. So it, it's just, it's, why would you want to virtualize that on that? You're not gonna wanna do it anyways. Oh, this next one makes me laugh. <laughs> Which one? The one I highlighted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we already covered that one. Oh, we did? Oh. Oh, oh no, you're right. We do it on compatibility. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I said that earlier, but yeah. Like, the, the next one is there'll be no loss of productivity. And then, of course, there's remember the apps. Because we, we covered loss of productivity with the new look won't scare people. <laughs> uh, so moving on to remember the apps. Like I said, Windows 8 is trying to push out this uh, marketplace, which is a monumental benefit in Linux, Android, uh, iOS, and you know now OS X, because they're alternative operating systems. Uh, it helps to go, here are all my applications in one centralized place. That's great. Uh, can you, but can you go outside the wall garden? That's the question. <laughs> well, no, that's not what I mean. Um, that's a significant benefit for Linux because if you're living in a Windows world and you go looking for Linux software, it helps to have a, well, this is where all the Linux software lives. You know, same thing with Apple, same thing with iOS, same thing with Android. Okay. In a Windows world, here's where all the Windows software lives. Am I the only one that thinks that's a little superfluous? That's like Microsoft trying to introduce that Game Center when we have Steam. Is any Windows 7 or Vista user, excuse me, Windows 7 user using the Microsoft Game Center to manage their games? No. Okay. Um, games for Windows. Uh oh, which incidentally enough, when you install Windows 7 yourself or not installed by default, you have to know to go tell it to install them. <laughs> which, so, Although what I find funny is when you download a game from Steam, you have to uh, install the DRM for not just Steam, but games for Windows. Yes, like right. I said, but still, is anybody using the Windows Game Center to manage their games? No. <laughs> uh, now that might change with the UI change. You know, it might be a way to manage. Okay, where are these few non-existent 
native Windows 8 UI applications? Where can I find the ones that don't make me box with my computer to know what's running and what's not? <laughs> Good luck finding it. Yeah, well, those will be in the Windows 8 Marketplace. <laughs> so in that respect, I guess it might chant, but that's kind of a problem Microsoft created so they can solve it. So they developers, 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 right? <laughs> okay, Balmer. <laughs> and uh, the dancing monkey. Uh, oh, yes. There is one bit of good news in Windows 8. Something that all of us have been waiting for for over a decade. And that is, are you ready for it? IE10 will have spell check. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing Firefox has had since um, it was Phoenix. Like I said, the th things that IE users have been waiting for for over a decade, <laughs> IE10 will finally have spell check. <laughs> That's like the uh -huh. one saving grace. For all you Internet Explorer users who refuse to use a good web browser, <laughs> you now, finally, after a decade, will have spell check, just like the rest of us. So bravo, bravo for you IE users. We're so proud, we're happy. It's about damn effing time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that'll come in Windows 12. Let me see. It only it it, it, it only took them a decade to get uh, over a decade to give IE a fundamental basic feature. So you know, 2020 it'll get the other ones, right? No, yeah. I don't remember all the features before they had the good ones. 